So we'll, yes. we'll, we'll go for it, I think. That's the best thing to do, okay. isn't it? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Rosala, um, welcome to Cube Radio. Thank you so much for talking to us this morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Anthony. How are you? And thank you for having me. Thank no, you. It's an absolute, it's an absolute pleasure. It's, it's an honour to have you uh, at, a, at a very humble little station. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all right. I'm all right. I mean, the, the sun's shining this morning. It's a beautiful morning. What's, what's it, it like where you great. are? It looks great. Well, the, yeah, the sun, is, the sun is out, you know. Um, and I always say to myself, even if it's a little chilly outside, when the sun is out and the sky looks bright, it just makes everything look a little bit better, doesn't it? It, it just makes all the difference, doesn't it? Really Yeah, does. it makes a difference. It does, really does. Just a little thing like a bit of sun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Very simple, isn't it, really? Exactly. <laughs> um, so, Rosala, obviously... Um, Everybody sort of knows you of uh, the queen of, uh, of rave, uh, f- uh, hits like Faith, um, Are You Ready to Fly? And of course, the iconic uh, Everybody's Free. Yeah. What, what don't we know about Rosala? Um, that she can also sing ballads, you know, really slow, easy listening tracks, um, mid-tempo. Um, and some of my hardcore fans know that, but I sometimes have felt over the years I've been pigeonholed into being this uh, artist that only does dance music. So when fans or friends or whoever have listened to some of the ballads I've done, they go, oh, she can also do ballads. (laughs) (laughs) Comes as as a bit of a shock. Comes as a shock, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So can we expect uh, to hear more of this type of music from you? Is it something you're, you're oh, looking to do more of? Absolutely. In fact, uh, around 2008, 2009, I actually did a, uh, an album that was not strictly jazz, but sort of had very mild touches of easy listening jazz. And uh, the title of that album was called Brand New Version. So I, uh, it was my dream come true to do that, you know, and I did that. And I had Simon Lowry play piano and keyboards on it and one of the best pianists ever. And we co-wrote quite a few of the songs together and I did some covers. Uh, fast forward, um, I'm working on an album uh, which should be out uh, sometime, well, I guess with this coronavirus, maybe sometime next year now. But on that album, we've got different styles of music from, you know, lift your hands up in the air to mid-tempos to ballads. And so we've got all different dimensions of music happening on it. So something, uh, something a little bit different, and, and obviously something your 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 regular sort of fans are, are hugely looking forward to. Maybe something a little bit different from from Rosala, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I, I was intrigued to know as well what what do you do, and because of the circumstances at the moment, we've all got lots of spare time at the moment. Um, yeah. What what do you do in your spare time? What do you like doing to to sort of take you away from the music and that that yeah. kind of thing? Well, currently, you know, for the last few years, I've been learning piano um, and I have to say I passed grade one, grade two and grade three, uh, all by a slim chance, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't believe that for a minute. <laughs> but I, I got there, I got there. So I'm currently, I'm currently learning um, grade four and I was really hoping I could sit it this year. Um, it's really, really a challenging instrument to learn, my gosh. And it just seems to, the grade four to me has, it seems to have, it might as well be grade eight to me. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's like, you know, trying yeah. to do that. <laughs> yes. But it's, it's yeah. a challenge and I'm determined and it's a, a beautiful instrument. So um, my piano teacher would be happy to know that I'm actually practicing more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> You've had the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's what I've been doing, and uh, and so the puzzle is slowly but surely fitting into place. I mean, I was playing some pieces the other day, and and to me, it's like, oh, I'm just not good enough. I mean, I'm not a pianist; it's 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 a challenging instrument to play. And then my husband later came on and said, I was sitting in the lounge and I heard you playing, and you sounded like a proper pianist. So I'm like, mm-hmm. really? Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's just the encouragement I need to keep going and not give up. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're, I've got a 13-year-old daughter um, and she's, she's learning to play the piano. And we, we've, we've just bought her a first sort of proper keyboard. All right. Just had a birthday. So she's getting used to it. Um, I think she plays a lot at school, but um, 
it's she's enjoying it and I think yeah. that's that's the main thing isn't it? I think that comes that's across the main thing yeah that's the main thing um my husband has told me look the, the main thing uh, is to enjoy it it's not like you are gonna do some concert with Lang Lang or one of these players up there and you're doing it for you you do need to enjoy and and you know if you know you play one little piece better than you did the next day that's what it's about yeah. you know enjoy it and tell your daughter from me not to give up because time goes by so quickly i mean i can look back at my stupids and go gosh i've done grade three and i passed them and it's like i can't believe it and when i play that when i play the piano i still think i can't play <laughs> <laughs> but your husband tells you different but my husband tells me different, so that keeps me going. And but, that's, you know, that's what you need. Yeah. yeah, that's what I need. And, you know, yeah. And I can read a bit and stuff like that. So it's like, go back to grade one and then come back to where you are now. You didn't even know where your middle C was, but now I know. <laughs> <laughs> see, I, I haven't got a clue. I can't read music. You see, well, there you go. So I can't, can show you that's my middle C. Bang! <laughs> I, I can't play an instrument. I can't. <laughs> Very untalented, really. Oh, no, no, no. You're a good radio host. So there you go. You got something I don't. So there you're, you go. you're too kind. You're too kind. Um, now, of course, with lockdown and everything, um, from, from reading um, about yourself, I know you were due to have a busy year this year, weren't you? Um, oh, gosh, yeah. Of course, that's all changed now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was sometime January this year. My husband and I were looking at my diary. And I had about 70, 80 dates in my diary for this year, really? you know, and yeah. And my husband's like, you know, the, the mind can play tricks. He's like, I think this is your busiest year than last year. But I said, I think my last two, three, four years has really been busy. But, you know, it's just one of those things. Every year is a different year. And, and um, the workload has been increasing for me. I found that I'm still doing my club dates, but they you know, more the festival, the outside festivals were coming into my diary from the last few years. I'm doing like major festivals, like uh, the one of them is called Let's Rock and they have anywhere between 10 to 25,000 people at them. I did quite a few festivals in Spain sometime two years ago and the biggest one we did was 25,000 people. I'm going, you know, coming from doing the nightclub scene where I performed to about 500 people, which to me is still a lot of people to so many thousands of people is staggering, yeah. you know, and, and that's how I found things have been going for me in my career. But you know, Antin, I'm one of those people, you just take one day at a time and whatever comes your way, you deal with it the best way you can. Yeah, I think, I think that's the only way you can, uh, you can yeah. go forward and, uh, and stay strong and, and positive and, that's right. and things will happen, that's won't right. they? Things will happen, things will happen. And if it's going to be club dates the whole of this year, well, thank you, God. <laughs> yeah. you know yeah exactly just, uh, appreciate it appreciate yeah, it exactly um so your new single we've been playing a lot of it here at cube um thank you we absolutely love it it's fantastic um, thank you and the response we've had from our listeners as well has been immense oh um, my gosh thank so you so much just to, to have a chat with you and let, let everybody uh, sort of listen to rosala rather than the the, the artist is, yeah. is just a fantastic opportunity for us and our listeners as well. Um, oh. Where did you get the inspiration for Magnificent? It's a, it's a fantastic tune. Thank you so much. Well, I'll, there's a little story behind it that I've been, you know, I, I thought to myself, shall I tell it or not? Um, the song was written by Charlie Mason and Charlie came into my life, I would say maybe about four or five years ago. He uh, sent me some songs uh, privately on, on my Facebook page. I never knew him. He's like, I'm a songwriter. I've written for these people, blah, blah, blah. And then I listened to his songs. I just thought, wow, what a talent. He's, he's got good songs here. Um, his lyrics were really special. And so we, we got to work in and we did two tracks together. Um, if you say it again, and that went to number five in the American Dance Club charts about yep. five years ago, which was incredible. Yep. And then later on, we did another track called Shadows of the Moon. Um, and then he had some of his, I guess, friends, promoters, producers, remix, uh, some other additional tracks. And then I got a um, promotions company here who I've known for some years to send it out to the club DJ. So there were about, let's say, seven mixes 
right? And the promotions company were like, Rosella, of those seven mixes, three of them are really, really strong. The other four will not be good for your career. So, right, you know, okay. you, you really can't do that. So that's the advice they gave me. And those other four happened to be mixes that came from Charlie. And so I told Charlie, this is what happened. He was not happy. <laughs> One way to upset a writer. <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. He's like, no, you got to release them. And I'm like, look, it's it's my career, and I must take advice from the prom promotions company who know better than me and what the DJs, the radio, etc., would perceive. Anyway, cut a long story short, move further. Uh, I started working with uh, Energize Records, and Gary's like, oh, I got this track from a guy called Charlie Mason, <laughs> and it's called Magnificent. And then I said, wow, you won't believe. I worked with him a few years ago and we parted ways because he wasn't happy that the promotions company did release the other versions of uh, Shadows of the Moon. And um, Gary said, I'll speak to him, I'll talk to him. And then the next thing, I get an email from Charlie saying, uh, I believe you like Magnificent. Well, I'm here to tell you that I don't want you to do it. I'm not happy about you. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not happy Rude. about you doing it after what you did to us. So I was like, Wow. Okay. So I told Gary and Gary's like, I'll, I'll talk to him. But I had to reply to that email. And I said to Charlie, look, I won't be dictated to what stuff I can or can't release. You know, it's my life. It's my career. Um, but I respect your choice. And if this is how you feel, I wish you well, you know, Charlie. And it was good knowing you and good working with you in the last two tracks. You know, I still think you're a talented um, songwriter and this is how it is. So I left it at that. The next thing I received another email, well, you're obviously a really lovely person, so you can do magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. That was easy, um, wasn't and it? Then, yeah, and then, and then I, I said to Gary, who runs uh, uh, the Energized Label, this is the other thing that I got. Yeah. And then uh, Gary says, look, I've worked with Charlie on a few tracks and he's quite like an up and downhill, you know, very emotional songwriter and he wants things done, blah, blah, blah. So. Anyway, I said, look, anyway, we've got Magnificent. So that's how that came around. Brilliant. You know, and, yeah, that's how that came around. And the other thing I must say, Anthony, is songs that I've received, whether it be from Charlie or anyone, um, might not be the best of demo sounds at the moment as I hear them, but I try and keep an open mind. Yeah. You know, and I think at the end of the day, it will be the vocals and how you lay down the vocals that will change the track and mostly the mixes. And yeah. the mix that Matt Pop has done for Magnificent took the song to a different level. Yeah. And all the other mixes that have been done that I've listened to from uh, Brothers in House, from Lucian and Razor have just been, they've transformed the song from how it sounded to when Charlie uh, gave it to us. But we saw, we saw a gem in it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's worked a treat. That, honestly, that we, we, we not only us here at Q, but the listeners, we can't get enough of it. We love it. We play it. Thank I, you so I don't know how many much. times every day, but it's fantastic. And we're going to carry on playing it. And we're going to play oh, it after this you. as well for you. There you go. Thank you. Um, thank you. I really appreciate that. That's all right. No problem. It's, it, it's a tune. It really is. Um, I want to give a big shout out as well to uh, Jonathan Dahl. Yes. One of um, Energize's music promoters. Yes. Yes. Um, um, Jonathan, bless him. Not only does he, does he do his bit for Energize, but he's also on the front line as well. Um, yes. So yes. we want to give a, a shout out to obviously all the front line workers, but especially to Sheffield Hallamshire Hospital, where Jonathan yes. works, uh, oh. in particular, his rheumatology clerical department. Yes. There you go. Yes. That's for you, Charlie. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, for Charlie. Thank you, thank Who's you. Charlie? Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, <laughs> sorry. Jonathan, yeah. And thank Jonathan. you to Jonathan. He's, he's, been, um, he's been amazing. Jonathan has really been amazing in, you know, pushing my, my tracks to get it played on radio stations all across the world. And he's just been really wonderful for me and for Energize Records. So yeah. thank you, Jonathan. No, yeah. absolutely. Right. Now, I thought we'd have a bit of fun, if you don't mind. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't look worried. I know, okay. Right, we asked our listeners if they could ask Rosala a question, what would it be? Right. Okay, so I've got, um, I've got about five or six questions from our listeners, if you wouldn't mind. Right, yes, yes, okay. Right, first one is from um, one of our regular listeners called, uh, his name's Donald. 
Um, but McDonald's. he goes, uh, he goes uh, as trues as McDonald, he calls himself. Trues as <laughs> McDonald. So you, McDonald, right. So you can guess where he's from, can't you? Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Not Wales. No, <laughs> not Wales. <laughs> right. Rosala, Truesers would like to know, what and where was your favourite venue for performing? Wow. Um, I don't have a specific one because um, there's some that are just, that just jump out and are so special. But I'm not dropping names, but I, and going back, I I'd have to say, if given a choice, was when I supported Michael Jackson at practically all of the stadium venues across Europe. That was it in was 92, surreal. wasn't it? That was 92. That was surreal. Yeah. Yeah. Surreal. I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. So there you go, Trusers. Uh, next one is from Randin, one of our listeners in, uh, in the United States. Oh. So Randin would like to know, who were your favourite musicians uh, you looked up to when you were young and who influenced you? When I was growing up, um, there was an African artist called Letta Mbula that I loved and just loved the, her voice. Um, I loved uh, Barbara Streisand, uh, the Jacksons, um, Dinah Ross. I wanted to be Dinah Ross with that long flowing hair. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so those are the people I listened to and uh, tried to emulate. And, uh, Aretha Franklin, Aretha Franklin yeah. was top of my charts yeah, yeah. fantastic artists okay next yeah. question from Suzanne uh, Suzanne would like to know if someone could play you in a film about your life wow who would you pick to play you that's a question oh that's a question oh my goodness I'd have to say Halle Berry I think she's so stunning I think she's so beautiful and I think she's a wonderful actress I'd have to say her <laughs> Na natural choice, I think. A natural choice. Um, okay, a couple more. We've got one from Phil. Uh, what advice uh, would you give aspiring artists coming into the music business now? I would say don't be disheartened. Uh, never give up. You will tell, you will have people that will try to um, lead you on the other side of negativity. And those are people that, you know, just don't believe in, you, in your craft. I believe there are people where... Uh, you should listen to who will give you constructive criticism if you're not a good band player or musician player or a good singer. They're just some people that just won't give up. And 10, 20, 30 years later, they haven't gotten anywhere because they are not that good enough. So listen to people who go, you know, you're not a good enough singer or listen to people who go, you're a brilliant singer. Don't give up. Don't give up. And then you'll get some people who will tell you you're not good enough, but in your heart, you know you can sing. You know you can play that instrument well. You know that you're a great performer. Listen to your instincts and never give up. It's a tough industry, you know, and when I got involved, it's been a tough industry. Then I feel in some ways it's gotten even tougher, but then I really don't know because in some ways having social media and the internet now in the modern times in some ways has made it easier because... Yeah. I'm able to be in touch with my fans directly via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, whereas before we'd write letters and I just think, yeah. oh, I got a thousand letters, I'm not even going to re reply. Yeah. And now yeah. I can, you know, send out one message and it can go to a thousand fans. So yeah. I think the thing is, you know, Anthony, is just believe in yourself and not give up, not give up. Sound advice, sound advice. I like that. Okay, right, we've got... Two more for you. Um, Alice would like to know uh, what inspires your music and writing? Oh, what inspires? When I'm given a song, i.e. like Magnificent, for instance, and I heard the demo and I heard myself singing the song, uh, personalizing it with my voice, my uh, accent that I put to it, if you want to say, um, you know, adding different dimensions to the words and stuff like that. I can hear it. I can hear it uh, before any music is, is even put on because I know hopefully when it goes to my vocal stems go to producers out there, you know, they know what, I don't know, everybody, it's, it's like a, um, a cake. You put in different ingredients yeah. and uh, to make that cake uh, come out baked nicely and that's what uh, mixers will do uh, to a song. Um, and when I'm given a song and I enjoy it, when I'm in the studio, 
I feel so inspired to make it my own. I sing that song. I've got the studio with me, a few little lights, my lyrics that I can just about see. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I sing to what I'm feeling. I, I, I want to feel that song. You know, when I remember when I did Magnificent, there's some, some parts, particularly in the chorus, that is so high that, uh, you know, when I was in the studio, I asked uh, um, Paul, uh, uh, the engineer, to just give me a little bit of reverb because uh, I was hitting those notes. And when I came out of there, I thought, I'm not going to do this live. The, the notes are too high. <laughs> I'll have to change it. But that's how I felt when I was singing it in the studio. I felt inspired, you know, and I, and yeah. I went for it. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. One last question. Um, one of our one of our presenters, Sarah Jane, she uh, she presents our lunchbox show between twelve and two, and a couple of other shows for us as well. She she likes to have a bit of a warble herself. All right, okay. To be fair to her, um, and she would like to know, Rosala, do you need any backing singers? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I always need backing singers. You've got to I admire her for to... asking, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I always need backing singers. I, I often think when that time comes. Um, I'd love to, you know, go to the band, I don't know, a, a five piece band, a 10 piece band. And I often see, you know, a, some backing singers, about four or five backing singers. And that's one of my dreams. I've achieved it in some ways, but not quite, you know, because it's when I got them do shows, it's myself and my USB stick where all my band members are. And then sometimes yeah. I'll have dancers, yeah. you know, and, and to be honest, Anthony, it's easy because then it makes travel easy. It, you know, you're not worrying too much about this whole band thing but that's one of my dreams is to have a big full piece band with backing singers and dancers and uh, so, so tell sarah i might be knocking on her door one of these days. <laughs> well, don't, don't get her excited whatever you do really okay oh, there'll be no living with her i tell you <laughs> so sj watch this space and <laughs> oh. and listen for your door to knock oh goodness but, but don't, hold your breath. Something. don't hold your breath love eh? um <laughs> Rosala, do you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this morning. Thank you so much. Um, huge, huge uh, love and success with uh, Magnificent. We're going to keep playing it all day long for you here on Cube Radio. Um, could I just ask you one quick favour, if you don't mind? Yes, yes. We, we've got a thing here at Cube Radio. Our thing is Keep It Cube. Right. I just wondered if you could give, uh, give all of our, our listeners uh, and viewers as well, because we're going to pop this on social media, a uh, quick message from Rosala. Uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep it cube. Hi, this is Rosala. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep it cube. Rosala. Let me do that again. I think I, I might have got mixed up somewhere. Go. <laughs> <laughs> She's going for again. take two. A better one for you. One going for, for take you. two. Here we go. Ready? Hi, this is Rosala. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep it cube. Do you know what? <laughs> was that better? That was magnificent. <laughs> oh, baby, you are magnificent. <laughs> Rosala, thank you so much. Um, thank, you. thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this morning. From everybody thank here you. at Cube, uh, take care, stay safe. Thank you, and you uh, too. Thank you very much. And, uh, and again, I just want to say again, a cube to you, Anthony, and to all the, the hosts and everyone listening. Thank you so much for your support now and over the years and for the past years and the years going forward. And I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. We appreciate that as well. Thank you so much, Rosala. Take care. And hopefully we'll speak to you again soon here at Cube. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I'm always here. I'm ever long this uh, coronavirus lasts, I'm here. And I've, got, and I've got your number now, so there'll be no stopping me. You've got my number now, yeah, just drop me a line. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rosala, Take and we'll care. speak to you soon. Take care, bye-bye. Thank you, my darling. Take care, Anthony. Bye.